and welcome to Finance Conversations. This is the 19th episode of the Merging Life and Money Show, and I am super excited to be here with you today. For those of you who do not know me, I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I help frustrated professional women acquire and apply the relevant financial skill and knowledge they need to take control of their money from the inside out, manage their finances, and understand that they can live their best life with the money they have. Thank you for joining in today. If you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave me some comments and questions. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share valuable information about how to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. Today's show is actually the sixth episode of a new series titled The Scoop on Women and Money. I will be talking about why and how you should be taking control of your money. So grab a pen and a notebook as you might want to take some notes to discuss them further with family members, friends, colleagues, uh, whomever you want to, because it is about sharing values that could benefit others. If you have any comments whatsoever or any questions, make sure to put them in the chat. And if you want to talk to me directly, I will share my contact information a little bit later in the show. So um, as you know, the main objective of the Merging Life and Money Show and my very strong why is to empower as many women as possible with what I know about money and finance. So before diving into today's subject matter, let me say that taking control of your finances will change your financial future for the better. Wanting to take control of your finances is a personal decision that you must make. You must first dare to realize and acknowledge your current financial situation, then make a conscious decision that there must be a better way and start your transformational journey. Well, I can tell you that based on what I have experienced, what I have seen and lived vicariously through others' lives, if you choose not to control your money, your money will control you. Plain and simple, no but, if, or whatever about it. Furthermore, your money will control your life more when you do not have it than when you do have it. In other words, people who are not able to keep their spending under control will end up having tremendous financial problems that will control their lives. In this context, to take control of your money means being able to live within a realistic budget, one that aligns with your priorities, your core values, your goals, and your life purpose. So today, I will focus on three points, okay? Take responsibility for your current situation and realize that it is fixable, okay? To understand why and how you got there. And third, develop a realistic, attainable, workable, gettable, realizable, whateverable plan with stick to itness power. Okay, let's start. So the first and probably the toughest thing to do is to recognize that you are in a bad financial situation that you are responsible for and that the solution is reversible. You have got to decide to do something about it consciously. Therefore, I identify three ideas that you could put in practice that you, you must want to fix it, 
You must want to accept the fact that the situation is not going to fix itself overnight. And third, you must take action, commit, and stick to the plan. Okay, so let's look at wanting to fix it. Be prepared to do some serious introspection and soul searching to identify the sabotaging beliefs that are driving your financial decisions and arm yourself with knowledge about money so that you can learn to master it. There are a lot of good books out here, blogs or a website that you could peruse to build your knowledge on the matter. Two, accept the fact that the situation is not going to fix itself overnight. Getting on the road to financial success is within your reach, despite the fact that you cannot get ahead fast enough, save more money, and even know where your money is going. Don't feel bad. You are not alone. The statistics are showing it. All of us have some bad money habits that we must rid ourselves of. It took you months, maybe years, to get in that situation. So be patient, as it will take you some time to reverse it. Third, take action. Commit and stick to the plan. Now that your mind is made up and you are ready to take control of your finances, you must action your plan. And in order to do so, you must start. As um, Confucius said, a journey of a thousand miles begin with a single step. So great things commence with single beginnings, okay? Now that your financial remediation journey has begun, I can almost guarantee that at some point in your journey to fix your financial problems, you are going to fall off the wagon. But that is not a reason for you to quit. Your ability to persist is the only way you will succeed. Remember, your goal is not to achieve perfection, okay? Your goal is to fix your financial problems. So if you make a mistake, learn from it, do what you can to make it right, and then keep on going. Persistence is the key. And lastly, in order to stick to your plan over the long haul and truly live on your term, you've got to commit, okay? You've got to commit. You've got to stick to it and see it through. My second point is, Understand why and how you got there so that you do not find yourself on the same path ever again. So look back into your past and figure out what you could have done differently to change the outcome. And if you are not able to identify your shortcomings, I identified some telltale signs that you need to grow some financial muscle to improve your money management needs and take control of your finances. So getting a handle on your personal, fi on your personal finances can make your life a lot easier, help you build and maintain a strong financial foundation and move away from the living from paycheck to paycheck neighborhood. As they often say, it is better late than never. So I have identified seven of them. And they are, first, you have no idea where your money is going. Okay, so if I were to ask you now, what is the last thing you bought? And you haven't a clue? This means that you have trouble determining how you are spending your money or you are, uh, or regularly you, you have more months than money left over. This is a top reason for overspending each month. And it is a sign that you are not in control of your finances. I could tell you that people who are effectively managing their money 
can usually tell you within some degree of certainty how much they spend on their expenses, their debt, etc. They get very few surprises when it comes to their expenses and debts. So understanding where your money is going is not hard and can be done with just a few steps. Two, you don't have a plan. It is so easy to get caught up in the everyday life of surviving, taking care of yourself, your home, your family, your career, that you can easily fall into the motions and one day you wake up and you have no idea how you got to where you are, which is usually in debt, with little savings and not living the life you want. So having a plan starts out with knowing the life that you want for yourself. And I totally get that, right? Defining the lifestyle you want can be surprisingly hard, particularly when you have been in a survival mode for a long time. So do yourself a favor. Figure out the life you want and plan accordingly. Three, hope is a big part of your financial strategy. So if that's the case for you, if you are hoping that you will never lose your job, that you are hoping that you have saved enough or hoping that seeing things will work themselves out magically, there's a problem, okay? Hope is not a strategy, people, when it comes to your money. You cannot plan for every possible event. I, I, you know, I got that. But you can protect yourself, your family, and your income by having an emergency fund, having adequate insurance, et cetera, et cetera. I've talked about this in previous shows. So I would recommend that you go on my YouTube channel or my Facebook page and take a, a, take a look at those uh, previous videos. And you can also protect your future by saving for your retirement and having life insurance to protect your family if you are to become unable to work or when you die. Four, you know you have, you are, you're having trouble controlling your money if you don't know your numbers. A huge part of being in control of your finances is knowing and keeping track of your income your expenses, your debts, your net worth, etc. A pen and paper or an Excel spreadsheet are all you need to keep track of your money. Five, your money is always on your mind. If you are constantly doing mental gymnastics, try to remember when a bill is due, for how much, or if you have already paid it, or if you, have, if you are worried that your check will bounce for insufficient fund or your card might decline when attempting to buy something, it is a sign that you are not managing your money well. Effectively manage finances, get their instructions, and then run on autopilot. Another sign is that you are making only the minimum payment on high interest debt. If you are regularly only making minimum payments on your credit card, for example, because that is what the credit card company said to you that you needed to pay, then you are not managing your money efficiently. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, that you have a credit card with a $5,000 credit balance at a rate of 24 point something percent interest rate. Yes, it's real. Okay, TJ Maxx, William Sonoma, check them out. If you had a minimum payment of $100 and only pay the minimum on the card, it would take you over 30 years to pay off that $5,000 and you would have have paid close to $44,000 in interest alone. Okay. That is a huge cry for help that something is not right. So when it comes to credit card debt, it pays to make additional payments 
and make them often if you are not able to pay the balance off at the end of each month. You can also secure better terms with a credit card company because better term means paying off your debt faster and having a better quality of life while you are at it because you can pay less and see bigger impact. So it's absolutely worth, worth it to ask your lender to give you a more favorable rate. The seventh and last sign that I identify it is plenty more. Uh, you and your partner fight about money. If you are a big spender, you and your partner might have frequent fights about money. This is especially true if, you are spend, if your spending habits strain the household finances. Rather than get defensive, listen and acknowledge your mistakes. Work with your partner to learn new money management skills because if you do not resolve the issue, the conflict will continue. I did identify many more telltale signs, but I will stop here and I will put them in a little guide that you'll be able to access from my website or Facebook page or group this weekend. Now, let's um, get to our last and third point for today. Develop a realistic, attainable, workable, gettable, realizable, whateverable plan with stick to itness power. So start with the end in mind, okay? So if you want to fix your financial problem and finally get ahead, you first need to define an end goal. Otherwise, you will just be wandering aimlessly, okay? Think of it like this. You cannot plan a trip without a destination. If you did, it would be impossible to make a plan to get there. And how would you even know when you have arrived? So in personal finance, you need concrete goals to direct your path. You need milestone to chase after. You need a financial destination. So set one. Define what financial success looks like for you. Then define a series of concrete milestones that will act as markers along your financial journey. Now that you have uncovered and recognized the source and the debilitating reasons that drove you and contributed to your current financial situation, focus on solving them rather than dwelling on your stress. Okay, so here are a few ideas to take into consideration when developing your plan. First, one, create a budget, okay? Spend money in a way that helps solve the issues you uncovered. One of the best tools you can use to help you plan is a budget. A budget, as you know, is a monthly spending plan for your money. Okay, it is not difficult, people. Creating a budget is like turning the light on to find your way around a dark room, for example. You no longer need to roam in the dark, banging your knee, your toes, tripping over the furniture, stepping on the cat or the dog. Instead, with the lights on, you can see what is going on and prevent problems before they happen. A budget guides your spending decision so that you are spending money on what is really important to you. In this case, you will spend your money in a way that helps solve your financial problems. Two, determine financial priorities to guide your spending choices. To overcome financial problems and solve your difficulties for good, you need to determine what your priorities are. Okay, some might be clear cut financial priorities like paying off your credit card. Others might be lifestyle goals based on your values like 
save up for house repairs so that your family has a nice place to come home, for example. Right? So setting clear priorities for yourself makes it easier to make tough financial decisions. So turning priorities, and priorities are what's, what is important to you. Turning them into actionable and achievable goals, which are what you do with your money, will help you solve your money troubles and get back on track. Three, identify small steps you can take to address a problem and achieve your goals. The solution to financial problem is often to reduce expenses, increase income, or do some combination of both. This might not be something you want to do and you are not alone, okay? Most people don't want to make changes to their lifestyles, but faced with the choice of ongoing money troubles or making several small changes to ease up the financial stress, most people, right, are game to try. So big changes are always much harder than small changes. We all know that, right? So to accomplish your goals, identify small steps you could take to achieve them. Four, develop your plan to overcome financial problems for good. Okay, once you've come up with some ideas for how to begin tackling your financial problems and difficulties, you can put together a realistic plan to accomplish your goals. Some goals will have a timeline of a few months. Others will need a longer timeline, like 24 to 36 months. I mean, it took you a long time to get in that position, right? So write your goals down but also write down where you are at now in relation to each goal. Five, review how things are going. The last step takes place once you are a few months into working on your plan, okay? Every once in a while, take some time to review how things are going. Is your plan working? Are you making progress toward your goals? If not, you will need to take a closer look to figure out why not and adjust your plan. Okay, your plan needs to be realistic or it is not all, it is not going to work. Okay, so it should also contain some things you were not doing before you put the plan in place. As you know, if you keep on doing what you were doing before, then you will continue to get the same result as before, right? And what is that result? Problems. So you must do something different to get a different outcome, solution. As you follow your plan and see improvements in your situation, Be open to the possibility of fine-tuning the plan, okay? So once you start making some progress, you may find that you are doing better than you thought or you may come up with some new insight. So you may decide to improve your plans so that you accomplish your goal faster. So do so gingerly, okay? Do so only if your budget can afford the changes And everyone who relies on your budget is okay with the new approach. Six, preventing future challenges, sorry, preventing future challenges. Unexpected financial challenges are bound to arise in the future. In fact, research and statistics show that most people will experience major life events that will challenge their prior financial plans. The key to tackling these challenges is to be flexible. So review your budget occasionally and make necessary changes as needed, okay? Build up savings so that you can handle unanticipated expenses without going into debt and putting yourself in a difficult situation. 
Overcoming financial problems and difficulties is not easy. Okay, nobody said it was going to be easy. However, by setting some clear priority for yourself, by identifying ways to achieve these goals and sticking to your plan, you can overcome the challenge and at the same time put an end to the financial stress. Okay, I said a lot, so I'm going to wind down and sum it all up. So today I talked about three things, three main things, right? Taking responsibility for your current situ situation and realizing that it is fixable. Understanding why and how you got there. And developing a realistic, attainable, walkable, gettable, realizable, whatever boom plan with stick to itness power. Okay. So before I forget. Let me share my contact information. You can reach me by sending me an email at mj at mariejocesar.com or by sending me a DM, a direct message via Messenger. Okay. Uh, as always, I'm going to leave you with these last thoughts. Taking control of your money means investing in you. Okay. It means you have to start doing things a little differently. I know you can do it. That I know. And there is no better time to start than right now. So if you want to fix your financial problem, there's a price to pay. No free lunch, people. You are not going to see massive success without massive effort. So get intense about improving your financial future. Fixing your financial problems might not be easy, but I promise you, it is worth it. So believe in yourself. Take ownership. Get intense. Make a plan and persist. Persist. You can do this. As you know, I like to end the show with a quote. And today's quote is from none other but Pablo Picasso, the renowned Spanish painter and sculptor. And it reads, our goals can only be reached through a vehicle of a plan in which we must fervently believe and upon which we must vigorously act. There is no other route to success. For more information about how to achieve financial wellness from the inside out, and live a purposeful life with the money you have, join me next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time for my Bermuda Pips, 10 a.m. Friday, Brisbane, Australia Time for my Australian friends. I will be talking about life insurance, and I plan actually to have my first guest on the show. And it's a guy, believe it or not, Eric Dudley, who is a life insurance specialist, live and direct from Florida. So thank you for being here today on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now. Thank you.